Well, ladies and gentlemen, we move on now to supplying solutions, the Moglix journey. Now, Moglix has been described as an unlikely unicorn, and we're about to find out why. By way of background, very quickly, Moglix is an industrial B2B marketplace in India and also became the 13th firm in India to achieve unicorn status this year. And it's a great pleasure to introduce to the stage the founder and CEO. Please give a very warm welcome to Rahul Garg, the founder and CEO of Moglix. A very warm welcome. Thank you so much. Please yes. do take a seat. Join me here, Rahul Gerg, founder and CEO of Moglix. Thank you so much for joining us. Great no. to have you here. Um, I've given you a very, very brief introduction. So maybe in this sort of first question, you could you know, give us a little bit more insight into exactly what your platform does and, and a bit more of a background. But also in the meantime, you've been described as this unlikely unicorn. So tell us a little bit about why that is. So quick on Moglix firstly. So Moglix is uh, today becoming the operating system for manufacturing and infrastructure sector. In simple words, you can think of what the consumer commerce companies are doing, delivering products every day in and day out to consumers. We are trying to transform that experience for manufacturing and infrastructure sectors, which are almost in the case of India, 25% of the country's GDP. And relating to the question which you asked about being a unlikely or uh, not so very well understood uh, unicorn, I would say we touch in our consumer lives every day, food delivery, grocery delivery, mobile delivery, so on and so forth. But it's not in everyday life we realize that a cell phone that was manufactured, a cloth that was manufactured, a car that was manufactured, a helicopter, any, anything that is manufactured is basically coming from some manufacturing plant. And when you start to map out all of those transactions, they become almost three to four X bigger than every single consumer transaction. There are close to 100,000 components that go into building a car, right? That is the scale of uh, what the manufacturing happens on the back end before you get a single consumer transaction of buying a car. So when, we, when I started in 2015, I remember a story that consumer commerce in India was already large. There were fairly multi-billion dollar unicorns that existed. And when we said that we want to do this for manufacturing and infrastructure sector, it was largely, I would say, not very well understood. How will technology play a role? What kind of supply chain challenges exist? What is the data problem that needs to be solved? And I think there was no corresponding example that you could quote that somebody has done this in X market and we are trying to do that for India. So it was a very first principle solving for India, attacking 20, 25% of countries GDP and with my background of having spent five years with Google and before that in technology, I said, we got to go out in this market, add technology layer, add our supply chain capabilities and we can add value. And uh, we became the first unicorn in B2B commerce uh, and I'm sure there will be more that follows. Huge congratulations. Very, very uh, interesting. But I think that uh, deserves a round of applause. So what do you see as Moglik's sort of center of innovation and the, the sort of keys to its success then? So I think Mo Moglix was uh, pretty much centered around how can we take a very, very large sector which might have very less technology and start to think as a technology first what can the technology's role be in that particular sector? So when I remember, I, when I started to look at manufacturing as a sector, we went into these manufacturing plants and we said like, if we just put all of these products which are today being bought offline, online, will you buy those products? And they said, we are definitely keen to understand it, but we have business processes using ERP systems, using sort of negotiations, all of that, and we just don't know how to solve that. And I think therefore, Early on, we enabled this culture of very first principle thinking that we will take a business problem, we will come up with what can be the role of technology to solve that business problem and we'll continue to design solutions, whether it is the technology, whether it is designing a SaaS platform, whether it is thinking about data, whether it is thinking about supply chain, whether it is thinking about financing. And that became the core DNA for the company. 
do not try to look for corresponding examples that I want to take this innovative business model from X market or Y market and I want to bring that. I want to look at the problem in the eye. I want to figure out what, what can be the innovation that can be done. I want to think about pilot. I want to think of scale simultaneously. And uh, that is how the Moglix got built. And uh, we continue to look at uh, different problem sets and pretty much apply the template that we'll not be, we'll learn from others, but we will be biased towards our own thinking framework of solving a problem. So let's talk a little bit more about supply chains in general, as well as the manufacturing sector as well, of course. Tell us a little bit more about the sort of landscape post pandemic now and also you know why the UAE and other emerging sort of markets as a whole need to use digital going forward so I think what pandemic has taught I think there are two very important takeaways that I have firstly I think it is very interesting that uh, it is probably in my entire 20 years of professional career I don't think ever a prime minister of a, a country mentioned supply chain in his speech and that happened during the pandemic because you realize that you needed all of the medical supplies starting from mass sanitizers all of those and india went through a wave too which was very very uh, worse and uh, there was all this need of oxygen concentrators oxygen cylinders so on and so forth so you start to realize that what happens behind the scenes and for all this while as a consumer we just sort of were oblivious uh, to this world suddenly is so, so important for uh, functioning properly. If your pharma companies were not working, you would not get your medicines delivered. If your grocery companies like the likes of Unilever, GSK, many of them were not working, you will not get the products delivered. So suddenly a supply chain in the background has become front. And you start to realize that as a country, what are the capabilities that you have built? Because in a crisis situation like COVID, there can be weeks or months where every country has to fend for themselves, right? And uh, everyone, with, I remember India crossed, interestingly, a milestone a uh, few weeks back of uh, uh, delivering more than 1 billion vaccines to people and uh, all of them manufactured in India. Now, if India did not have the pharma manufacturing capabilities to scale to such levels, and this is probably equal to 50, 60 countries population combined, right? So that's the scale of manufacturing. If you're not able to do uh, and then supply it effectively to people, you cannot actually function very well as a country. So I think supply chain has suddenly become a front and center of many of the conversations and a very, very important competitive dimension as well as I would say certain survival. You cannot any longer as a global landscape depend on one or two countries to be the epicenter of manufacturing. If you need semiconductor chips, you want to figure out are there multiple countries which have the capabilities. If you think about pharma, you need that. If you think about specialty chemicals, you need that. I saw some conversations of sustainability. If you think about sustainable packaging, you need that. Both manufacturing and supply chain therefore becomes critical and Interestingly, we seem to be at the heart of many of these industry because we traverse and work with many of them, both in supply chain as well as thinking about manufacturing and innovation. Did you ever imagine how important strengthened supply chains would be when you started the company six years ago then? So I think uh, uh, as an entrepreneur, you always start with a dream. Uh, and uh, I think uh, definitely the dream was that this can become very, very large. What has happened in consumer commerce, I always believed that this is three to five X bigger. I didn't understand probably or appreciate what happened during the COVID times in terms of interconnects across countries and what can be uh, the implication for global supply chains in the future as much then. But uh, I am very, very bullish that I think we need to appreciate manufacturing and the role of supply chain far more than uh, what we had in past and COVID taught, taught us that because we were kind of moving towards more services economy, not realizing that uh, everything that we are using in our day-to-day -day life, I mean, imagine this conference room, there is probably 1,000 unique products being manufactured by multiple layers of manufacturing companies. 
That is how these products got from various countries, came to this place, got assembled, all of that, right? So, so that's, uh, uh, everything is, finally there is a base manufacturing, I mean, starting from a water bottle and water uh, purifier to, ev everything has a manufacturing and supply chain at the heart of it. And uh, you can't take it for granted because uh, it has an important role in life. You can't eat software for life, right? You can't <laughs> sort of say, I'll get treated by software. If I need a medicine, I need a medicine. So interesting. How important exactly has the UAE been then for your growth story? So I think UAE uh, has been a very interesting market. We just launched early this year. Um, the way I think about it, uh, UAE is becoming an interesting epicenter. One, it is a very large oil and gas base. We work with oil and gas sector. So I think we think the role of technology, again, is very, very minuscule in today's operation of oil and gas or these industries. I think it can be far, far more in terms of how these technologies can deep penetrate and start to look at efficiency, start to do various kinds of analytics uh, and uh, supply chain optimization, which probably has never been done because maybe it was not that important. But also uh, the focus that they have on the energy sector, the focus they have on the sustainable, and plus making it as a hub for GCC. I think this is uh, uh, from uh, over the last six to nine months as we have gone about it, I think uh, we are committed to making this as an epicenter for GCC, if not for the rest of the Europe as well, uh, which is still under consideration. And I think uh, a fantastic partnership so far with the country and uh, the leadership here. That's what I, my next question was, in fact. Tell us about some of the other sort of regions you're looking at exp expanding into. So I think we have been over the last 18 months far more, I would say, limited by our ability to fly into countries versus uh, uh, amb ambition and scale of expanding into different uh, regions. We believe the Moglix template, the way we have gone about building it, it is a unique company solving very, very large problem which exists across 50 plus countries. We take the entire GCC, we take the entire Africa, we take the entire Southeast Asia. It is all of these regions will have certain bit of manufacturing, certain bit of oil and gas, FMCGs, autos, so on and so forth. And they have not been able to benefit from how supply chains can be digitized, how supply chains can function smoothly for them not to sell, if, not only to sell effectively in their own markets, but to sell across the border. How do you bring frictionless financing across countries because today there is a clear goal that uh, India and UAE are looking at uh, strengthening the trade across the two countries. Now it cannot happen unless you have frictionless finance as well, which is available for suppliers and buyers. So uh, we are definitely looking at all of these regions. I think uh, um, as the world opens up and we are able to fly to more countries, you will see uh, more, more things coming next year. Watch this space, certainly. Uh, we haven't had any audience questions for a while. Now that we've got a couple of minutes at the end of our session now, I'd like to throw out to our audience and give you a voice. So do we have any questions at this moment? Uh, I think we've got a microphone at the back. Uh, if we do have any questions, do we have any questions? This is your one moment to ask anything you like uh, to our special guest here. Any further questions? Do I see a hand going up? Yes, we've got a lady at the back there, and the microphone is just next to you. If you'd like to tell us who you are and what company you're from as well, please. Fantastic. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much. Um, Shada El Borno from Standard Chartered Bank, based here in the UAE. It's on, right? Okay, I'll speak louder. You've touched upon sustainability, uh, which is a key priority now uh, globally. Um, on, uh, in your domain, how are you featuring it in everything that you do, right? Because increasingly, sustainability needs to feature across the entire value chain. So how are you working on in embedding that in your strategy, in your modus operandi? Very good question, yeah. No, fantastic. And I think there is uh, obviously a lot of development. So as a company, we are fairly big on packaging, which is one of the major use cases of uh, sustainable. I think there is enough... I think regulatory environment as well as innovation that is happening that how do we stop single-use plastics? Um, how do we think about uh, migrating? We work 
and power a lot of the other e-commerce companies, B2C e-commerce companies as well on food delivery and so on and so forth. So how do you kind of not only think of using paper-based uh, mechanisms and uh, sustainable packaging, which can be both used in forward as well as in a reuse mechanism. So that is clearly one area of innovation that is happening. But as a company, what additionally we are working across auto, chemical, pharma, steel, mining, EVs, we work across all of these companies. And when they are looking at supply chain and they are trying to figure out how can I do it better and how can I do it, uh, for example, the recent innovation that we just partnered with is a commercial vehicle provider who is electric commercial vehicle provider. Now, can the supply chains be actually be running using the EV vehicles rather than the classical oil base. So I think there is many of those that we are committing to, I think, uh, and a lot of innovation that will come over the next few years. Great question, very topical as well. We have one more question, I think. Yes, just in the back there. Please do tell us who you are and uh, which company you're from as well, please. Sure, uh, my name is Utkarsh. I'm the CEO of Network Capital. It's an education company. Um, my question is that when you look at um, you know, your entire business model. Have you considered like starting brands of your own, just the way sort of Amazon did, certain kind of products, maybe manufacture it yourself and then supply it? Or do you want to continue partnering with a wide range of companies? I was wondering if there's a hybrid model that you've explored or th thought of exploring. So uh, I would say early days, we, we continue to believe in partnering with organizations and brands and manufacturers and use our platform to be able to do supply chain effectively. We are continuously working. However, there are categories of products where there are no brands that exist today. And we are working with the manufacturers and suppliers in those categories of how do you start to get better certification so that they are able to really uh, testify the quality of the products because there are almost 30% of the products which are unbranded, so to say, on the platform. And uh, you need to determine what are the quality benchmarks before they can sell effectively on the platform and help them probably create their own brands or maybe become a Moglik certified product quality that can be sold on the platform. Thank you so much. Sadly, that is all we have time for. Thank you so much, Rahul Gurg. Fantastic speaking with you. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you. Let's hear it for Rahul Gurg there, please. Thank you. Founder and CEO of Moglix. Yeah. Thank you.